What's up, guys? Mikkel here, and things are starting to look really bad for the SEC and Gary Gensler. I have been saying for a while now that there is no chance Gary Gensler is going to serve his entire term at the SEC. And guys, we just got some information yesterday and actually a couple things that make it look more likely than ever that Gary Gensler is going to be forced out of the SEC. Guys, in this video, I want to break down what we just learned because this is absolutely shocking. And we now have people coming out who used to know Gary Gensler, ratting him out and exposing the corruption he has displayed at the SEC. Towards the end of the video, though, I want to transition and talk about a very interesting tweet thread from a lawyer breaking down why the SEC might already know the outcome of the Ripple SEC case or already have a settlement planned with Ripple. I want to break down why that would make sense. So make sure to stick around for this whole thing, guys. This is fascinating. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Make sure to take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange up hold down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, I want to start this video off and talk about some bombshell news involving Gary Gensler. We just found out yesterday that Gary Gensler, the guy who just launched a lawsuit against Binance claiming that they are selling illegal securities, actually applied to work at Binance back in 2019. Guys, this is absolutely shocking. It is a massive conflict of interest by Gary Gensler, and this is going to be a huge hit to his credibility going forward. Gary Gensler is now what I think is one of the biggest hypocrites on earth. Gary Gensler, the guy who taught blockchain classes at MIT, is now coming out saying blockchain's a scam. Gary Gensler, the guy who is complimenting Algorand on one of the best cryptocurrencies around, is now calling it a legal security. Gary Gensler, the guy who specifically called XRP a currency, now is trying to argue it's a security. And Gary Gensler, the guy who claimed Binance or launched a lawsuit against Binance saying that they are operating in a legal exchange, tried to work for them back in 2019. Guys, this is absolutely shocking. I have no idea how Gary Gensler is going to be able to have facts like this while he's at the SEC and possibly make it through another congressional hearing. This is going to be absolutely horrible for him, and I think more than ever, he needs to be on the verge of leaving the SEC. And guys, as bad as that is, it actually gets worse. Almost immediately after that was published, we actually had one of Gary Gensler's former TAs come out and actually attest to this and came out and also added that when he was a student, he actually wrote a report on the BNB token and talked about why the BNB token was so innovative and why he didn't think it was a security. And Gary Gensler actually worked with this TA to send this report to CZ Binance. So we have Gary Gensler literally working with these different students, talking about how great these cryptocurrencies are, how innovative they are, trying to communicate with CZ, Binance, and talk to him about the BNB token. And then as soon as he gets into office, he does a complete 180, flips all his opinions around, and tries to sue them for illegal securities. Guys, this shows you the kind of person Gary Gensler is. Gary Gensler at the SEC is not operating based off facts. He is not operating based off the law. He is operating based on what his political higher ups are telling him to do. Guys, I have no idea how Gary Gensler could get through another congressional hearing with these facts against him. And the more I think about it, the more I start to wonder. Just like Jay Clayton brought his case against Ripple right before he left the SEC, I'm wondering if the case against Coinbase and the case against Binance were Gary Gensler's two cases before he left the SEC. I have no idea why Gary Gensler would be incentivized to stick around and go through another congressional hearing with all these bad facts coming out against him on top of the FTX stuff still coming around the corner. Guys, this is bad and what we see is the public is starting to turn against him. Just today, we actually had Twitter literally put a community note on one of Gary Gensler's tweets where Gary Gensler said that Coinbase was depriving investors of critical protections, including rule books that would prevent fraud and manipulation, essentially going after Coinbase's throat. And community notes comes in and says Coinbase has repeatedly attempted to get guidance from the SEC. Guys, we see everyone is seeing right through Gary Gensler in the SEC. 
we now even see Democrats, specifically Richie Torres, turning on their own party and going at Gary Gensler. This is a shocking development because I think we all know where the state of politics are right now in the United States. Everyone is so together with their party, everything is politically motivated, they stick together at all costs, but what we see is Democrats are now actually turning against their own regulator. All this information coming out is just making me more confident than ever that Gary Gensler is going to have to leave the SEC, and guys, this is no new move for him. Gary Gensler used to work at the CFTC, he was doing similar shady things behind the scenes, and right before he was about to get cracked down on, he packed his his bags and left. I think we're going to see the same exact thing happen with him at the SEC. I think it's only a matter of time because guys, we are at the point where we have so much evidence. We have so many bad things about this guy. Eventually, he doesn't want to just get dragged through the mud at the SEC. It makes a lot more sense for him to pack his bags and leave. Now, I thought it was actually pretty funny. Meta Law Man actually chimed in here and he said, I would suggest that Gary Gensler block some time off his calendar to sit for depositions for the next decade. I have never seen an SEC chair this mixed up in underlying facts for a case brought by the SEC, nothing close. So guys, this just shows that we are not just overblowing this information. This is not some little deal. What Gary Gensler did here was extremely shady. And guys, this is gonna come back to bite him big time because even if what he did here wasn't necessarily illegal, it takes a sledgehammer to his credibility. And guys, this is something that I don't think enough people are factoring in. A lot of people are worried what happens if Ripple goes to the Supreme Court? What happens if the SEC appeals? What happens if this case takes longer? Guys, the longer this case takes, the better chance we have of getting someone in the SEC who is actually looking to benefit the cryptocurrency industry, someone who is actually looking to offer a settlement that can help both the SEC and Ripple so Ripple can actually go forward, move forward with their business, and actually be an innovative game changing company in the United States. Right now, Gary Gensler is not trying to do that. He is trying to kill cryptocurrencies. So honestly, the sooner we get Gary Gensler out and the sooner we get a new head of the SEC who actually wants to help this industry, guys, that is a wild card that I don't think enough people are factoring in. And I think it could be a game changer for this entire industry moving forward. That's why when I see stuff come out like this, I get so excited because Gary Gensler can only take so many bullets. Eventually, he's going to have to force himself out of there and it's facts like this that I think are accelerating that process. Because I want to finish this video off and talk about a very interesting tweet by Meta Law Man because this is something I had been thinking over the past few days but I wasn't really sure what the legal basis was behind it but I actually think the timing of this Binance and Coinbase case could mean a lot for the Ripple case. Meta Law Man tweeted out, the stakes just keep getting higher for the ruling in SEC vs Ripple. Here's why. If Judge Torres rules that XRP tokens trading on the secondary market are not securities, it could undermine the entire basis for the SEC's case against Coinbase and Binance. In the Coinbase case, the SEC claims that 13 tokens trading on Coinbase are securities, so Coinbase is illegally operating an unregistered securities exchange, a broker dealer, and a clearing broker. But if 13 tokens are judged not to be securities, the SEC has no case. So guys, this is very interesting because it makes you wonder, why would the SEC launch this case against Binance and Coinbase not knowing how the Ripple SEC case could end up? Let me phrase it this way. If the SEC waited to see what Judge Torres' ruling was, they would know, hey, did Judge Torres make any comments on secondary sales? Did Judge Torres say XRP trading in the secondary market wasn't a security? Because if they knew this information, they could have structured these two cases against Coinbase and Binance differently. For example, if the SEC knew that XRP was deemed not a security in the United States on the secondary market, they probably wouldn't have included the charges against the tokens and instead took a different avenue like purely going after staking. The fact that the SEC chose to take this avenue without knowing what was going to happen in the Ripple case is a massive risk for these two cases. So this is one of those things that really makes me wonder, does the SEC already know the outcome of the Ripple SEC case? Did Ripple and the SEC already agree to a settlement that isn't going to give other tokens on the secondary market clarity? 
All the SEC would have to do is settle this case with Ripple, say XRP is not a security, and they don't even have to give any logic for why that's the case. They can just say, get over it, it's not a security, moving forward, facts and circumstances. But instead, on the surface, it looks like what's going to happen is the SEC is going to take a massive risk, wait to see what Judge Torres says, and if Judge Torres gives logic for why XRP is not a security on the secondary market, it could undermine the two biggest cases they have going at their agency. Now, there's two ways to look at it. One, the SEC is smarter than we think. They do have a settlement planned with Ripple. They ultimately know what's going to happen to XRP on the secondary market, and they made the determination that that decision wasn't going to hurt them in these future cases. The other way you could look at it is the SEC is just going at these cases guns ablazing. They don't care what happens in Ripple. They were just going to file these cases anyway, and the timing has nothing to do with any of this. Me personally, I thought it was super weird that the Binance and Coinbase cases were filed back to back right before we were about to get a summary judgment decision in the Ripple case. And for me, it just has to mean there's something there. Meta Law Man and I both agree that what could happen in this Ripple case if we do get a decision at summary judgment could severely hurt the SEC's chances of winning other cases. So for me, it just doesn't make sense that the SEC would take this risk. All the SEC has to do to protect them in every other case going forward is to settle this case with Ripple. Guys, the SEC is not going to win this case based on the facts we have seen so far. Day one, Judge Torres and Judge Netburn were saying Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't securities and XRP has more utility than them. How does that make sense? She was also saying, hey, SEC, your arguments are lacking a faithful allegiance to the law and have been hypocritical. I do not see how the SEC walks away from this case with a win. I think their biggest win is to settle this case and prevent any damage in the future to the Binance case or the Coinbase case. But guys, we have been speculating on this for almost two and a half years now. We are so close to an answer. I cannot wait to see how this plays out, how everything ends up, because to me, regardless of how damaging this case was to the XRPL, no matter how damaging this case was to people who have had to wait this entire time, I think we can all admit that this thing has been absolutely fascinating and it has been a journey to go through with all of you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Really does mean so much and for now Mickle out Woo!